So I was wondering, can I get the rest of this thing apart, maybe? I don't know. Maybe there's a C-clip on the inside. Maybe that's my problem. So I'm trying to release these little tabs. And then it looks like the innards become outards at that point, somehow. Okay. Well, we definitely got that far. Look at all the electronicals in here. Oh, surface mount caps. Don't like to see that. So those must be the coils. So three phase motor. A couple of uh, heat sink uh, thermal pads right there to conduct the heat out there. Just a lot of electronicals up in here I didn't expect. Of course, unless I unsolder all of these leads, they're never coming up. So how, what is this made by? A cyan, A A I S I N, Eisen. Um, correct me in the pronunciation of that, please. But pretty nice looking circuit board. Oh, there's some uh, actual callouts. P ground, and then plus B. Obviously, switch pulse maybe S W P, and N W P, which is probably the uh, signal from the powertrain control module into this unit to tell it how fast to run the pump. And then what, what is in here? That's weird. Does it somehow detect flow? I'm wondering. Is that a valve to bypass the water pump? Possibly. Huh, that's kind of weird. Didn't come apart nice and easy. So the thing does still turn, but. I see laminated, uh, not windings, but a core right there all the way around. Well, we're here this far. Let's go ahead and see if we can get something unsoldered and maybe get into the bottom of it and see what's actually in there. Why not? Wasted this much time. We get the solder sucker warmed up and we'll move forward. One moment. All right, so I was gonna to try to add some fresh solder to these connections so I can unsolder them, but I took a look at this one right there and that one doesn't look too terribly good. Uh, let me go ahead and pause this so that I may enable macro zoom one moment. All right, macro zoom has been enabled. And I really don't like the looks of that connection. Either one of them, actually. You let me know what you think about them. They don't look super good. I have a very unhappy cat in here at the moment. Is that one completely broken loose? Let's see if I can lay it down here. Wow, that does not look good at all. I'm trying to hold it still. No, it still appears to be connected quite well. And then down here at the bottom of the circuit board, there are the three large solder connections that actually go out to the motor. Okay, well, I've got my solder sucker warmed up. Let me disable the macro zoom. And hopefully it shall focus, and yes, it shall. I'm going to add fresh solder to these connections. I've got my solder, soldering iron up to 800 degrees. So this is fresh leaded solder. That will help unsolder this thing with the unleaded solder that they use these days.
I may have to change tips to use the one millimeter on the smaller connectors and the 1.6 millimeter on the larger connectors. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, you can tell it was unleaded solder because as it solidifies, it turns kind of pasty white. All right, let's see if we can suck the solder off of these things real quick. Doubtful. Solder sucker is up to like 850 degrees. That one looks good. That one looks good. Get that solder ball off there. Like we're ever going to reuse this thing. Doubtful. Well, let's just go ahead and see if we can get the solder off of this thing with the large tip. Sounds like I may have to clean the filter soon. Still working, but not that good. Hello, trying to make a video here. I think most of those are released up here, but I have my doubts, especially about that one. Uh, give me one moment, let me clean the filter and we'll move forward from there. Okay, filter has been cleaned. Let's hit it again, see what happens. Much better. And yes, both of those are completely free now. Um, let's just hit these again real quick. Okay, pretty happy with that. Let me find a small Phillips screwdriver. And we'll see if these guys will give up peacefully. Amicably. Don't want a messy divorce. And yes. Okay, quite a lot going on in here. There's the, uh, would be an H-bridge FET assembly. 
three milliohm resistor for current limiting purposes, obviously. Now let's go ahead and just enable the macro zoom here, get a close up of this, see what it looks like. One moment. All right, well, there is the macro zoom version of this. Might be able to make out some part numbers on here, just in case you have one that is blown up. 82N06, maybe? 82N06. 82N06. Probably, where's the other ones? Oh, they are. Ooh, RJJ0601. 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 Probably uh, one half is the N channel FET and the other half is the P channel FET. There's the gate drive. Diodes, resistors, probably low value resistors in there. 100 ohm and a 470 ohm. There's a 104, so that would be what, a 10, 10K? 100K, 100K resistor, another 100K, F3 diode, 470 resistor and 100 ohm resistor right there. Probably all the same over here. But hopefully if someone's trying to repair one of these things one of these days, maybe some of these part numbers might be helpful to them. What was that T8238A7 maybe? TL? Yeah, TB. Yeah, TB looks like 238A7. Can't, nope, no resistor numbers on those guys right there. 3 milliohm, once again, current limiting resistor. So it knows if it's drawing too much current, like I'm sure this one did. Uh, X3 capacitor. No, not a regular X3. 100 volt surface mount cap. Not sure what the value is on that. If someone knows, please let me know. Or you looked at that chip right there. Some other resistor and diode values over in here. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap it up at this point. So I think it's pretty good construction. Let me zoom back out just a tad that uh, they did add the cooling strips, cooling pads to the back side here. M multiple, multiple test points to troubleshoot this thing. That is great. Um, obviously the factory probably never used them, but anyhow, that is what it is. All right. Well, this has definitely gone way over time. It's supposed to be a very short video, probably a minute or two. I couldn't get the rotor out. Let's tear this thing down and see what it looks like inside. Well, remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Failure on that one. Everyone, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay, well, I almost forgot. I wanted to take these apart and see what they are. But first, let me grab an ohm meter. It's buried over here on the workbench. And... Uh, that should work. Put it on homage. So let's just measure resistance. It is that a capacitor in there? Really? Well, we'll short it out. And it does charge. I bet that's a cap. What about this guy? Short it out. Small cap, maybe? Let's grab the MK168 and see what it has to say. One moment. Okay, MK168 out, out on the bench. Should say unknown, undamaged part. So let's go ahead and clip these leads on. I'm going into terminals two and three because I broke my number one probe somehow.
a 4400 microfarad capacitor with an ESR.1. That's quite good with a VLOS of 1.2%. A 102 microfarad cap with an ESR 0.18, VLOS 0.3%. That's really good. So I thought those were maybe solenoids, but obviously not. Let's go ahead and take the covers off if it'll let us, and it will. Okay, got it. And we got that one loose as well. So I just thought of something before I pulled this out. Let me get this ohmmeter out. And we'll set it up over here, put it on ohms, see what we get shorted. So 0 0.02. What is the reading on these coils? Wow, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. 0 .02, and 0 0.02. So they're basically a dead short. Holy crap. I would have thought there were maybe one or two ohms. Okay. Does this lift off peacefully? Yes, it does. Oh, look at that. The values are on those caps. 4,700 at 35, 35 and a 100 at 35. That's almost exactly what I measured. Oh, they put some glue down in there. Oh, jerks. So was this one 4,700 or was it a little bit less? I thought it was like 43 or 4,400. Yeah, we shall find out one moment. Forty-four oh eight, good ASR 0 0.09. That's not too bad. So the caps are good. I would imagine if you had one of these and you were trying to keep it up, you would go ahead and replace both of these caps, the one hundred and the forty-seven hundred microfarad cap. But that's what's inside the magic box. I thought it was maybe solenoids, but. Nope, they don't go anywhere on here whatsoever. Well, that is what is inside your, I think it's 2010 through 2015 Toyota Prius water pump that I can't get the rotor out of. I tried vice grips, pulling on it, standing on it, um, sliming it down on the ground, and uh, it's just not happening on this one. All right, everyone. Once again, remember with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Once again, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really, really appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.